I'd like to get right into the sermon now. And the first verse I'll read you is from 1 Kings 4, 27 and 28. It says, Jesus answered him and said to him, Most of, oh, I'm sorry, I just got distracted. My sign just about blew over. 1 Kings 4, 27 and 28 says, The district officers, each in his month, supplied provisions for King Solomon and all who came to the king's table. They saw to it that nothing was lacking. They also brought to the proper place their quotas of barley and straw for the chariots and the other horses. And then in Ecclesiastes 5.8 it says, If you see the poor oppressed in a district and justice and rights denied, do not be surprised at such things. For one official is eyed above a higher one, and over them both are others higher still. In both of these instances we see that uh, Solomon was writing about government. In one instance, uh, Solomon was establishing a large government in the province of Judah and over Israel, not just Judah, but over Israel, but it was in the province of Judah where his uh, uh, seat of government was. And then in Ecclesiastes 5.8, he acknowledges that governments oppress people, that there are people over people over people, and the end of government never seems to end. And this is what our founding fathers in America spoke against, was an excessive government. Instead, they spoke for a limited government. It says in Genesis 2.15, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. This was the first form of government over a human being when God gave a directive. You are not to do this thing. It was one commandment and it was in the negative. And yet we could not obey that single commandment. How much more then do we face difficulty when we have a load of requirements to meet, such as the law? Paul said nobody can fulfill the law. The law was a tutor to lead us to Christ, that we could not fulfill it and we needed him to fulfill it on our behalf. Likewise, an oppressive government is going to be something we cannot fulfill. The citizens, the citizens are burdened, and when they're burdened, their time is spent trying to please the government and not themselves. So the form of limited government is absolutely essential. Now it's raining very hard, so I may close up in a second, but we'll, we'll try to continue. To Adam he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Because they failed to obey God's governing law, they were banished from the Garden of Eden and it set up, by necessity, a human form of government. Whether it was mob rule or whether it was uh, limited government, anarchy, tyranny, it doesn't matter. God's rule over man ended at that time. And God says, you are going out now to suffer in the, um, in the wilderness, basically, instead of being under his provision in the Garden of Eden. Wow, is it raining. So, so all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. As I said, uh, Samuel was the last judge of Israel, and now they're asking for a king. But when they said, King, give us a king to lead us, this displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord, and the Lord told him, Listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day I brought them up out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and serving other gods. So they are doing to you. Now listen to them. But warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will do. So what happened is God is, uh, it's a theocracy in the Garden of Eden. After the Garden of Eden, there's men's rule. And then God redeemed the people of Israel, brought them out of bondage to slavery, and uh, became basically their king. He just simply had a judge, like a mediator, between him and the people. And they said, we don't want that. We want to be like all the other nations, so they asked for a king. And God said, they have rejected me, not the judges, by this happening. You're just simply like a mediator to me. And now he's going to tell them what it will be like uh, when you have a king ruling over you. Uh, Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will do. He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses, and they will run in front of his chariots. 
And then he goes on for verse after verse telling all the things that the king is going to take from the people, all the things he's going to make the people do, and they are going to suffer under his uh, authoritarian oppression. And uh, when that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king you have chosen, and the Lord will not answer you in that day. You've made your bed, lie in it, okay? So this is one type of government that uh, was established is the king rule. Uh, we have, you know, other types of uh, single authoritarian rule, but uh, this is what the people of Israel wanted to have. They wanted to be like the nations around them. In 1 Kings 4, it says Solomon also had 12 districts of governors over all Israel who supplied provisions for the king and the royal household. Each one had to supply had to provide supplies for one month in the year. This is going back to what the first verse I read from the same chapter about King Solomon establishing a rule in Israel. And this rule was based on him being king and then he apportioned governors over the different uh, tribes of Israel and they had to supply him with all the things that, they, that he wanted, just as Samuel had said would occur. And it's becoming a large bureaucracy, basically. So these people are over other people, over other people, and now you've got all kinds of fingers in the pie, which is basically what's happening in the United States today. Um, going on, another verse from the Bible says, You put a he heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. After Solomon died, the people came to his son, Rehoboam, and they said, Listen, your father was really burdensome on us, and it was a heavy yoke, and we couldn't bear it. We're asking you to put a lighter yoke on us and we will serve you. And so he said, why don't you come back to me in three days, I'm going to consult my uh, uh, counselors and then I'm going to give you an answer. And I'll read you what, what occurred in that, it's very interesting. Rehoboam answered, go away for three days and then come back to me. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam consulted the elders who had served his father his father Solomon during his lifetime. How would you advise me to answer these people, he asked. They replied, if today you will be a servant to these people and serve them and give them a favorable answer, they will always be your servants. But Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders, which they gave him and consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. So here's a lesson that we need to, to remember. Older people have experience, they understand the intricacies of life better than younger people. Rehoboam rejected the advice of the older people, he took the advice of the younger people, and it ended up in disaster. This is what we're facing in America today. We've got all these novices up in our government that don't know anything, and right now they are making bad decisions because they're not experienced in rational thought. Okay? But Rehoboam rejected the advice the elders gave him and consent consulted the young men who had grown up with him and were serving him. He asked them, what is your advice? How should we answer these people who say to me, lighten the yoke your father put on us? The young men who had grown up with him replied, tell the people who have said to you, your father put a heavy yoke on us, but make our yoke lighter. Tell them, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. My father laid a heavy yoke on you, I will make it even heavier. If my father scourged you with whips, I will scourge you with scorpions. Three days later, Jeroboam and all the people returned to Rehoboam, as the king had said, come back to me in three days. The king answered the people harshly, rejecting the advice given him by the elders. He followed the advice of the young man and said, my father made your yoke heavy. I will make it even heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. So the king did not listen to the people, for this turn of events was from the Lord to fulfill the word the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, through Ahiha the Shilonite. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, we, What share do we have in David? What part in Jesse's son? To your tents, O Israel. Look after your own house, O David. So the Israelites went home. But as for the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam ruled over them. The nation was divided because he wanted more government. He wanted a heavier yoke on the people, not a lighter yoke. The more intrusive government gets into his, pe the lives of the people, the more the people are going to revolt from that oppressive government. That's human nature. It's recorded throughout history, as well as in the Bible itself. The Bible tells us that this is not the way that we are to be conducting ourselves in government. More government, more government, handouts to people. This is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches a limited government.